On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome inside the 401st episode of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba, alongside Brandon Pillar back in the Blue Mountains. And it's a packed Monday after the Ottawa Senators went back to back against the Montreal Canadiens. 20 players were assigned to Belleville Camp, which gets underway today so we'll have a preview of what we can expect at the lower level but also how did players help or hurt their stock over the weekend tons to get into including two extra players sent back to their respective junior club did Pilsy see enough from Ridley Gregg to hope that he stayed around a little bit longer we'll get into all that and more this is the Locked On Senators podcast your team every day Today is Wednesday, October 4th, and Pilsy, before we talk about the players that are no longer at Ottawa Senators training camp, let's talk about the ones who are, because it's again an Ottawa Senators game day. Oh yeah, you would love to hear that, another Ottawa Senators game day, and up against the Toronto Maple Leafs, so it's going to be a good one after two back-to-back games against the Habs, and the roster is looking a little more a um, little more chiseled now, Ross. We're looking at uh, probably more likely the guys that we're going to see come opening night here, minus a couple, which is uh, definitely very interesting. Chris Tierney, especially one of the most uh, notable admissions there. And we'll see how this group does tonight. Yeah, we certainly will. And Eric Brantstrom on defense won't play. However, again, he's played the most minutes of any defenseman through training camp so far, the four preseason games where DJ Smith said the roster was predetermined. So now players that are still here are the ones who should expect to probably stay here and through the last three games and then make those final roster cuts. They're down to five lines plus one player. And then you've got, of course, the absent Brady Kachuk, eight defensemen left at camp and three goalies. But pulling up tonight's roster, if you are watching, on YouTube, and wow, that's pretty small. Let me grab a little bit uh, more of a zoomed up uh, yeah, version. Yeah, we probably need all the the managers and equipment staff names there. Although, hey, credit to those guys making it this far in the preseason too. <laughs> no question, those guys are are the uh, grease that helps the whole thing run. So, no, you got to respect the equipment managers, the trainers, all that staff. But in terms of the players for the lineup there tonight, it it's pulled up on YouTube. There, um, no word who's getting the start yet. We're recording bright and early. It's about uh, 8.30 in the morning Eastern time. On defense, you look like you're going to see on opening night, albeit yes or no to Eric Branstrom, Pilsy, because you've got the top pair of Shabbat and Artem Zub. By the way, happy belated 26th birthday to Zub Nation, who scored on the shootout. Of course, we'll have a full breakdown of those two games against Montreal. We're going to talk roster battles. But in terms of tonight's matchup, what are you expecting to see from these guys? Because it's as close to an NHL roster as we've seen since May 15th. Well, I'm hoping for a better game than they played up against the Leafs last time, let's be real. And especially because last time the Leafs roster was so bare. I mean, Michael uh, Michael Bunting, was that Ooh. the guy who got the hat trick? Yeah, he, Na- he natural like hat trick. all-star out there. <laughs> natural hat trick all on the power play. That's tough. So I guess key to victory. Don't take too many pounds. Michael Bunting, somehow, some way. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, what obviously jumped out to me when I saw tonight's roster, though, no Chris Tierney, but there is a Tim Stutzla and Connor Brown. What are you hoping to see with Shane Pinto now getting an opportunity at the second center position? Well, it's hilarious because we wanted him to be the second line center for this whole preseason. And then he gets put on a line with Austin Watson and Nick Paul. And what does he do? He helps them light it up. The Austin Watson scores the first goal of the game on a nice two on one set up by Shane Pinto. So it doesn't matter where you put this guy. He's yeah. NHL ready and he's proving it. You know, he's not he's not riding the coattails of his line mates like, um, you know, maybe some other younger players like you think of uh, a Colin Greening situation where he's just on a good line or you think of a Colin White, two Collins. 
uh, who was um, riding the coattails of Mark Stone, and you could see a big dip when Stone left. Like, that's not the case with Shane Pinto, right? Like, he's not just focusing on leaning on Connor Brown and Tim Stutzla. He's able to create offense and opportunities by himself and elevate other players who aren't necessarily offensive guys. Like Austin Watson on a two-on-one, I think most of the time the the other player would be like, well, sorry about that, Austin, but I'm probably going to take this shot. Like I'm not going to pass that over. But Shane Pinto, he found a good spot and Austin Watson gets a good shot and scores. So I definitely am excited to see him up in his rightful place in between Stutzla and Connor Brown. How much does this one game matter, though? Do you think DJ Smith is actually open to making him the second-line center on opening night? It's tough because, yeah, we've talked about this, and I like I feel like deep down, DJ Smith knows Shane Pinto is the best man for that job and does fit there perfectly. But also, on a surface level, he's going to stick to his guns and he's going to stick to the NHL coaching uh guidebook or rule book i don't know there's got to be some unwritten written rules down. yeah the unwritten rules don't of, give uh, steak to a baby <laughs> that's his quote in that one <laughs> exactly yeah definitely remember that so i can see him putting tierney there just to start the season to make shane pinto earn it even though in my opinion shane pinto has already more than earned that job but it wouldn't surprise me if uh, dj's back to his old tricks which hey Say what you want, it worked last year. Maybe did he wait a little too long and uh, maybe overcooked that steak before giving it to the babies? Yeah, probably. It was a little well done when he could have had it medium rare and finished a little sooner. But (laughs) as long as Shane Pinto does eventually become that second line center, which I think he will this season, probably very soon, I would say before the new year, Shane Pinto's uh, second line center. Well, I won't even give it that long. I'm going to say tonight he supplants that spot. And it's his from here on out. Did were you surprised that Tierney's just straight up scratch? They didn't try him on a different line tonight. Well, like you mentioned though, DJ Smith said the rosters are predetermined, right? So who knows if that first four games. So not tonight's the fifth. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, okay. Then definitely uh there there's something going on there. And I think maybe a nagging injury though. We don't know the ins and outs, right, of what happens each day in practice. Yeah, but also at at this point, like if DJ Smith wants to stand on the Chris Tierney argument for being second line center, he's losing that ground, right? Like how, <laughs> how, how many arguments does he have to support Chris Tierney staying there rather than Shane Pinto? It's a losing battle at this point. Right. Well, it seems like Andrew Agazino is going to get a chance to play tonight as well. So you got to think like, Hey, what's going on? Although he has looked good. Like he's been a decent player and I think he'll help Belleville uh, for sure this year, but I don't know if I'd have him in the lineup over Chris Tierney, even still on opening night. But we'll get into who's here and who's not here. We also have, um, you know, some goalie talk because Matt Murray got into his first full game and that went well. So you love to see that. And we'll also discuss what other battles are ongoing because the roster has been trimmed down to 27 players. And that includes three goalies. So if you're doing some quick math here, and Brady's not signed, you only need to cut two more guys before being eligible to play in the opener. Oh, and you got to add some salary as the Sens are still $1.1 million under the cap floor. Wah, wah, wah. We also teased on Friday that Elias Pettersson and Quinn Hughes were going to sign. We've got the numbers, and the details don't help the Brady Kachuk argument of more signing bonuses. We'll get to all that, but... We've got some sponsors to get to, including a new sponsor alert. But first, let's tell you about our friends at DirecTV. Because does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get your entertainment you love but without the hassle. And a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream. And it brings you live TV and on demand together like never before. So you can watch your favorite shows, movies, and sports all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. The best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. 
You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. And Ross, now time for one of our new sponsors. And the timing of this new sponsor couldn't have been worse. I wish we had this new sponsor one week earlier, Ross, because I would have loved to take advantage of what they have to offer. Sens fans, this is Brandon Piller from the Locked On Senators podcast, and I've got an incredible app for everyone who buys gas, and you need to know about it. It's Get Upside. Now, if you guys have been following along, I just did a cross-Canada road trip over 4,000 kilometers. I brought Ross's car to Winnipeg, and then I kept going all the way to Tofino. That is a lot of gas, and I could have saved some money if I had known about Get Upside. Our listeners are making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now and use promo code HOCKEY and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using Get Upside. Just download the app for free. Use promo code HOCKEY to get up to $0.50 cents gallon cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot more are making as much as two to 300 bucks a month in cash back just for buying the gas you had to buy anyways. There's no catch. The cash back gets added right to your account. I would have made a decent amount of money doing a cross-Canada road trip with the Get Upside app. And best of all, you can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Get Upside app and use promo code HOCKEY to get up to 50 cents a gallon cash back on your first tank. That's code HOCKEY at Get Upside app. Check it out today, guys. All right, Pilsy, I've been teasing it. The roster cuts are here. What do you want to see first? Who's left in Ottawa or who's coming to Belleville with their training camp opening today? Let's stick with the Ottawa Senators for now. We'll get into Belleville since it's a game day for the Ottawa Senators. Perfect. This is who's left with the Ottawa Senators. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. If not, we'll run through the line combinations. Alex Formanton did a fantastic job filling in for the absent Brady Kachuk. Again, we'll get to the negotiations, the comparables, and all that. But Pilsy. Is this the best Sen Central bump we've ever had? Because Formy's just on fire. Yeah, it's definitely one of the best Sen Central bumps we've ever had. And uh, hey, he deserved it. And this is a guy that I'm not surprised that he's doing this well. Like he is someone that all the tools are there. He just needs some time, some experience, and some opportunities. And now he's getting those and he's showing three. All three players, Formerton, Norris, and Batherson, had three points on that 7-2 beatdown of the Habs. Is that good? I think so. Yeah, extremely good. And a big reason for that was Formerton's speed that he can use. And one of the things about Formerton's game is that sometimes it was... The, the, he's got a great nose for the net, but it's his shot from distance that's improved so much. And he used it again against Montreal. So love for me on the top line right now, right now is the key here because we can't wait for big number seven to be back. Okay. Second line. I have Tierney here between Stutzel and Connor Brown, but we know that that's going to flip. These are from the latest lines that each player has played in not going forward. So this is from Friday and Saturday. You've got Colin white between Zach Sanford and Nick Paul. That line will get another chance tonight. Then Tyler Ennis, Austin Watson, Shane Pinto. That was another good game for Tyler Ennis. This guy's just continuing to build on his good camp, and we'll see if that earns him a contract. And then the AHL line. I was a little surprised to see Logan Shaw stick around just as the captain of Belleville. Maybe you want him there from day one of camp, but good on him. I actually thought he's played pretty well, and he's going to make his uh, mark here with the rest of camp. And then Scott Sabrin sticking around. Not sure why. Um, He's just... He's doing his job out there, I guess. He's finishing yeah. hits and, and uh, annoying people for sure. You could just ask Wayne Simmons about that from the last game against Toronto. On defense, this is maybe going to be the same once final cuts are made. You can keep eight defensemen, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Sens do, at least for the start of the year, unless they want to start Branstrom on a one-way or on a two-way contract 
in Belleville. No waivers required. So the defense right now, Shabbat and Zub, Delzato and Zaitsev, Branstrom and Josh Brown, and then Victor Mete has been paired with Nick Holden. Holden has been playing the right side. In goal, Matt Murray, Anton Forsberg, Philly franchise, the three remaining. Pilsy, let's pick up where we left off there. Matt Murray gets his first full game in. Well, outside of a bathroom break, he, he, <laughs> he missed the start of the, was it the second or third period he missed? I think the second. It was only 53 seconds of yeah. game time. Yeah. And like right when they dropped the puck, they panned over to the bench and he was just coming out of the tunnel. So quick yeah. bathroom break. But while he was on the ice, he was solid, especially early. How great was it to see those two post to post saves coming, sliding across. He was compact, no rebounds. That's the tone that he needed to set for his season. Absolutely. And this is what I expect from Matt Murray. I think he has the opportunity. It seems like he's confident. seems like he's healthy. So he's ready to have a big bounce back season. And there was even a stretch. Sure, the Sens were running away with it. But he had to make seven consecutive saves in a row, like before the Sens had a shot. So he was able to stay consistent, stay hot keep his team in the game and they ended up with a big win. They got some goal. He got some goal support from his teammates. So you'll love to see that from Matt Murray. And this is, this is a guy who he's able to be a number one goalie. It's just, he wasn't the, the cards weren't right last season. Like it just, it wasn't working out for him. He couldn't stay healthy. The time he was healthy was the Sens worst period of hockey to start the season. So you can't fully put all of that on him, although he was a big part of uh, the blame why they were so terrible. But I think all that's in the past, and I've got big expectations for Matt Murray this season. So do I, and he showed well. 25 saves on 27 shots. One of those goals against was on the power play for Montreal, and I'm going to be watching the PK tonight because now that it's the typical guys out there, I need them to tighten it up, right? Three power play goals against when uh, when Toronto was in town last week, and then again giving up one against the Canadiens, albeit on five penalties, right? They're, they're still calling everything super tight. And, uh, well, I guess that leads us to our two junior players that went back because Ridley Gregg, known for not being able to stay out of the box, and Zach Ostapchuk, uh, who had a, a pair of penalties uh, in the last game against Toronto, a face-off violation and a trip, they're going back to their respective junior teams. And let's start with Ridley Gregg because Austin Chuck used a nice story, but the plan all along was he's going back. He just got drafted. Great of him to go back with a $92,000 signing bonus, right? Getting his entry-level contract under, under uh, the book. So that's great in itself. But with Ridley Gregg, were you a little surprised that, A, they didn't keep him around at least to kill off that one-game suspension to start the year? And, two... I mean, he had the biggest highlight real goal this preseason so far. He's made an impact. Like, were you a little surprised that he's back in junior? No, to be honest, I wasn't that surprised. Like, uh, you know, I think maybe if he doesn't cross-check Pierre-Luc Dubois in the face, then we're looking at a different scenario where uh, the Sens are saying, all right, we got to keep you around. But that was one of the main things that uh, was talked about, right, is you need to find that line and not cross it. And he crossed it right away like he always does. So I think that's a little bit of a, well, Ridley, you still got some growing up to do, which is fine. You got you got some uh, discipline issues to work on, and you, you really need to figure that out. You can't have that happening and putting your team in a scenario where they're not only down a man, but you got to kill off a five-minute major penalty. So I think that definitely was a big part of why Ridley Gregg was sent back. And... You know, as far as the suspension goes, whether you burn it this year or or uh, next year or whatever, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's just one regular season game, so I think that's fine. And I don't think he's he's quite ready for the NHL, anyways. And we're still waiting on Brady Kachuk. We've got Tyler Ennis coming in here. I know they're those are wingers, not centermen, but also I think that uh, we're we're pretty set at the center position as it is now. And I don't think you need to rush Ridley Gregg, although. What's, what's the point of bringing him back to Brandon? He's just going to dominate. I would love to see him in Belleville, but we all know that's not that's not the case. It's not able to happen. They're so disrespectful, though, bringing him back the day after they played their, their season opening back-to-back -back against the Winnipeg Ice. I would have loved to have been in attendance for one of Ridley Gregg's yeah. games. And the Brandon Wheat Kings got absolutely spanked in both games, 9-2 uh, and 7-1, I believe, the two scores. Uh, but the Winnipeg Ice are stacked. They've got two Jeez. top 10 picks. 
yeah. coming up in this in this year's draft. But with Ridley Gregg, man, the one thing, and I don't mind that they're they're dead set on him being a centerman, and that's fine. I, I'm not against it. But we talk about Shane Pinto struggling in the faceoff circle. Pills, are you ready for Ridley Gregg's faceoff stats this Uh-oh. this preseason? Not so good. on Sunday, right when we were at the game in Winnipeg, he went one for eight before he got kicked out. Yeah. Last on uh, Friday when he got in against Montreal, he went two for nine. So you're you're batting about eighteen percent in the faceoff circle. Three for eighteen. Three for seventeen. In, in the circle. So you got to just tell him when he's going back there, your main goal two. <laughs> please, please, please just work on the dis- discipline just a little bit. And two, be in the gym man. get, get strong. Make sure you're practicing your face offs day in and day out. And if he does that, man, this guy's going to be a hell of a player. You saw him reach into his bag of tricks with the, with the dangles. And we like that, but with Ridley Gregg's game, it's going to be more so about how can you be an effective player without crossing the line, yeah. a la Nazem Kadri. I feel like that's a pretty good player comparable because kadri has got skill and he pulls it out every once in a while. First round pick, but you gotta you gotta take the good with the bad <laughs> and hope that you mitigate the bad as much as possible. A uh, quick word on Austin Chuck as well uh, before we move on. I, I'm really happy for the kid. Like, man, to come in your first opportunity and impress the coaching staff like this, like, it seems DJ Smith, once he's finished talking about Parker Kelly, of course, the next guy he goes on to is Zach Ostepchuk. And what a what a great start for this kid. And like you said, he signs his entry-level deal, gets a signing bonus. Suck on that, Melnick. Uh, he can't get the signing bonuses away from the entry-level deals. Eh? Damn CBA. <laughs> um, but... Now he's going to the WHL. He's going to the Vancouver Giants. There's big expectations on him. I think the Vancouver Giants, like let's take it even a step lower, are having massive expectations and expect him to lead this did, team. If did he you see? The top scores. They got uh, Fabian Lysel from uh, from the no NHL way. draft. Whoa. Yeah, damn, yeah. that's a good pickup. So that could definitely be a guy who uh, put him beside Zach Osipchuk, and you could see some major points going up. So that's great to hear. And. Uh, yeah, I think the Vancouver Giants are an interesting team. How did they, were they a bottom team last year? Like, what are their kind of um, overall expectations? I feel like that's a WHL team that kind of gets swept under the rug since they've got an NHL team there. They don't get as much focus as some of the other clubs. Yeah, I have no idea how they did last year. I just know Awesome Chuck got better and better as it, as it all went on. So yeah. um, they opened their season with a 5 nothing win against Victoria. I can tell you that much. And there now they're go. getting help as well with the Awesome Chuck into the lineup five nothing shutout too against victoria so great at both ends of the ice we'll be following along with austin chuck and ridley greg here in the whl but let's get to belleville senators training camp it's opening today and there's a familiar face on the training camp roster i don't know if you saw andrew sturtz is back he was sent to montreal in the mike rally trade we'll tell you about who else is going to suit up this year for the belleville senators do they have realistic Calder Cup expectations and a whole lot more. But first, a word from some of our sponsors, including a new sponsor alert. Indeed, thanks to the great resignation, the job market is filled with once in a generation talent. So, how is your organization going to put together an all star team? Your front office needs an all star roster, and you need Indeed. Indeed is a hiring partner that gets you what you really want a short list of quality candidates as fast as possible because you can do it all attract interview and hire all at indeed what else is there to hiring attract interview and hire you can do that all at indeed indeed is an unbelievably powerful hiring partner where you can do all of the above it's your go-to hiring partner and in that you can you can usually struggle, all right? Like we've all seen it before. Just like me getting through that sentence, you can all struggle to find quality candidates, but Indeed can help you hire right away, right now. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process so you can find talent with the skills you need through tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessment, and virtual interviews. That last one's awesome. I didn't even realize you could get Virtual interviews on Indeed with Instant Match too. As soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description and you can even invite them to apply right away. 
With Indeed Instant Match, over 90% of employers get quality. That's the key word in all this. Quality candidates as soon as they sponsor their job post, according to Indeed data. Candidates you invite to apply through the Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than those who only see it in search, according to Indeed data. So get started right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. That's a great deal. $75 credit at Indeed.com slash locked on. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through December 31st. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Love that new sponsor, Ross. And hey, I can say personally, I've gotten probably my last six jobs from using Indeed. So like I can tell you from a personal experience, it really does work and it's a great website and I've been happy with every job I've gotten on there. And hopefully, I don't know for sure, but the employers have been happy that they found me (laughs) on Indeed as well. So let's get to another sponsor, not a new sponsor, a old favorite of ours and it's Built Bar. Mm. Guys, I talked about how I just did that road trip Thank goodness for Built Bar because when you're driving through Northern Ontario and you just passed Wawa and there's not another gas station or food service for hundreds of kilometers and your stomach is starting to growl, well, I was sure glad I had some Built Bars in the car with me for the ride. There's so many different amazing flavors to choose from. It never gets boring. You never get tired. It's the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. All the bars are covered in 100% chocolate. They're soft. They're easy to chew, and this is probably the best part about Built Bar. Low calorie, low sugar, so you don't want all that stuff, but on the flip side, high protein and high fiber. And at Built.com, they're always coming up with great new flavors. And here's a flavor that I haven't tried yet, and if any of our listeners have tried it, let me know what you think. I'm going to get a box of these for sure. It's Cherry Lime Built Bar. So that sounds like it would be a cola flavor, but Built Bar is trying it wrapped in chocolate, and I'm sure, just like all their other flavors, it's going to be an absolute smash. Only 140 calories, but packed in there is 17 grams of protein. And guys, the sweetest part of Built Bar is since you're a listener of the Locked On Senders podcast, we're going to hook you up with the promo code. So head to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you're going to get 15% off your next order. Guys, check it out today. Cherry Lime Protein Bar by Built Bar at Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order. It's Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. All right, Pilsy, we got to get to the Kachuk comparables and then we'll get back to Belleville's training camp roster. And well, we've got some great news out of the NCAA in exhibition play before their seasons get underway proper next weekend. Let's actually start with that because it's a nice, nice, uh, positive way to lead into segment three. And that is, well, it took Tyler Boucher about 10 minutes to score his first NCAA goal. Again, caveat, exhibition, but got to feel good. And that's about as classic of a Tyler Boucher goal as you're going to get. Find space in front of the net, put it home. Yeah, when when I saw the highlight Tyler Boucher goal, I was like, obviously I was stoked about it. And then- Sen Central bump. Yeah, yeah, another Sen Central bump. And then watching the highlight, I didn't even look for Tyler Boucher. I didn't even try to find the puck. I was like, well, if he scored a goal, all I need to do is zone in on the crease. And I think I'll be able to find him. And I think I'll be able to tell when he scores. And that is exactly how it happened. So you love to see that from Tyler Boucher. His first goal, yes, exhibition. But his first college goal looked great. You got to feel good heading into the season like that. And Ross, that's not the only college news we have. No, no. Take us through Jake Sanderson's debut. And all I got to say is Hobie. Well, and this is a similar situation. The classic Tyler Boucher goal classic Jake Sanderson goal. It doesn't, you don't zone in at the crease of the opposing net. How about you start in your own zone with the puck, carrying the puck up ice. Like this is just, it's, it's NHL 22 cheat code for Jake Sanderson here. Like he just has the puck in on a stick in his own end, looks up and is like, I got this. 
skates oh, yeah. so smoothly. As we know, he's one of the greatest prospects in skating, and he's just weaves through the ice, weaves through any player, comes up up the wing, short side, nice shot. How are you, Jake Sanderson? That's going to be happening all season long, Ross. And yeah, I'm with you. If he doesn't win the Hobie this year, I'll be shocked. Oh, yeah, if he continues this, there's no competition. Captain of World Juniors and all of the great, you know, um, honors that he can get as a college hockey player before turning pro in Ottawa, man. He can't get here soon enough. That kid is a complete star in the making. Of course, we're going to be following the NCAA right here on Locked On Senators, and we do appreciate everyone making us your first listen when it comes to Ottawa Senators content every damn day, Monday through Friday. We just had our biggest week ever, and that's crazy to say because there's been some great weeks, some great guests here on the show, and last week, no guests because we're getting geared up for the NHL season. We'll get back to our Sen Central citizens. We'll get back to getting analysts and all those things. Pilsy was doing a cross Canada road trip. I'm getting setting, getting settled into my new digs, but we will be in Ottawa 10 days from now for the opener of yes. the season. Cannot wait Go. for that. Still some roster battles to be had. We'll get into that further on tomorrow's show following Sens Leafs tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern. And they got some making up to do after that 4 nothing shutout loss last weekend. But Pilsy, again, we teased this before. Quinn Hughes, Elias Pettersson, Brady Kachuk, the three Musketeers in Michigan waiting for their contracts. And, well, Brady must have driven them to the airport because now he's all alone skating with the U.S. program. Elias Pettersson has agreed to a three-year bridge contract worth $7.35 million. And Quinn Hughes... Brady's best friend, one of them. Don't want to yeah. call Josh Ooh. Norris off like that. That's oh, stressful. Oh, oh. But you look at Quinn Hughes's contract, six years at $7.85 million. We'll get into the structure, but what do you think about those two terms and contracts for those two up-and-coming stars? I would say those are good deals all around. Like if, if I had to kind of – I don't know, it seems silly to do, but name a winner and a loser. I would say the Vancouver Canucks won both of those signings. Like, those are great team-friendly signings, especially the Quinn Hughes. Like, Quinn Hughes is making less than Thomas Shabbat. Now, am I saying he's a better or worse player? No, but I'm just saying comparably, they got him for less money than Thomas Shabbat, and he's a younger player, and we already started comparing Thomas Shabbat to some of these other defensive prospects. So that looks like an even not prospects, NHL players, but that looks like an even better contract now when compared to some of the Jones, Wierenskis, uh, Heskinens, all those kind of guys. So you got to credit the Canucks there. And then with the Elias Pettersson one, I think that's a classic bridge deal because uh, if I'm not mistaken, the final deal or the final uh, cap hit on that deal is massive, right? To get his qualifying offer through the roof. Isn't it like over 10 million? Yeah, the third year of the contract is ten point two five million. So they would have to qualify him, I believe, at about ten point seven. Yeah, so that's a nice baseline to start at if you're Elias Patterson. He's so sick though. I mean, yeah, when healthy, it's worth he missed, it. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He missed most of last year with, with an injury. I believe he's all good. But Pilsy, we, we gotta get into this, right? Because it's structure. And that in itself is structure, right? Pedersen's making $4 million in salary this year, seven point eight next year, and then ten point two five in the final year. Only $1 million in signing bonus this, this year. Only $1 million, and that's it through this contract. Quinn Hughes, no signing bonuses. However, however, the structure is still favorable to Hughes. Now, I'm just pulling it up right here because these are the notes, and uh, shout out Puckpedia. Uh, who does a great work with uh, contracts. So with Quinn Hughes, his compensation is lowest in year one, which you'd yeah. expect just because of the age and, and backloading. However, the highest escrow right now. So what players need to pay back, it's 18% right now. But in years three to five of the contract, when escrow is going to be at its lowest at 6%, so players will get to keep the most of their money in those years, Quinn Hughes has the highest yep. salary for those three years. And then it's lower in the sixth year, 
because that could be a possible lockout year. So they want to protect as much. So there's lots going on. People wonder why contracts can take time. And that I would say is a pretty clear reason just of how you need to structure contracts. And you'd think though that uh, the agents and Brady Kachuk's camp could, or and the senators rather could figure this out by now because we're now we're, we're tomorrow. We're going to be single digits before the first game and, yeah. and no Brady Kachuk. That would keep, but a huge damper on opening night. If he's not there. I think I might cry. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like we've been waiting years to see our Ottawa Senators play hockey again. It's the home opener. There's so much positivity. The rebuild is over, according to Pierre Dorian. And we're starting up against the Leafs at home. And no Brady Kachuk? Come on. I know. Trash. Can't happen. Can't happen. Oh. Don't allow it. Still lots of time, right? Like, the Pedersen and, and Hughes. Is there, though? Like, what, what's going to change? Like, what can... That's, Are you that's pressing the panic button? Here. Like, what changes from now to the home opener? Like, how... Like, I feel like he, both teams, and Ross, maybe I'm going to mess this up again, but have drawn their line in the sand, not toes <laughs> in the sand, they've drawn their line in the sand, and they're sitting on the beach staring at each other saying, if you don't move that line, we're not getting anywhere. And I think no one's moving that line. And... I don't know, maybe the pressure of the home opener getting closer kind of turns the heat up and eventually this game of chicken has to end. But I don't know who it ends for because it seems like Brady Kachuk and the the ruthless, what's the word, cutthroat Kachuk method is going to last here because I would say they have more leverage than the Ottawa Senators. It looks, it looks terrible on the Sens if Brady Kachuk isn't there for opening night. Yeah, well, we're soon going to find out, but everything can change in, in an instant. I guess that's what I'm more so getting at because Hughes and Pedersen, the reports came out on Friday that they were going to sign, but it wasn't announced till Sunday. However, they were already on the ice on Sunday. So it doesn't take long once everything's together. I'd say it has to be signed by Tuesday, the 12th, if he's going to be in the lineup on the 14th. You'd hope yep. it's before that, but I think that's probably the drop dead date of whether or not he will play on opening night. We know that the guys we're about to get into will not play on opening night. I'm pulling it up on YouTube. Not there. Just pulling up the Mike. Belleville Senators training camp roster. And there's some interesting names on here. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it, but we'll go through it ourselves. So did you find it interesting that Philip Gustafson is on the AHL roster here because he was not reassigned? <laughs> And he's on the NHL roster, is he not? He is. So, uh, hey, Philip Gustafson, good. Man, this is the secret. Play in the NHL and AHL at the same time. That is great development. No spoilers, right, as we go forward. I think that might say, though, that Anton Forsberg has the backup spot locked up. Again, he was solid, though, in Montreal. He played well. We should at least mention the score of that game on Saturday. The Sens lost 2-1 to one to Montreal on uh at Bell Center, I should say. So um, all that being said, I mentioned the familiar face. We'll pull it right back up uh, for one moment. But everyone who was reassigned that we already went over with. And then Andrew Sturtz getting another look. Like Logan Shaw is on here as well. Like I just don't understand why they put out the names of guys who haven't gotten cut yet. And then you see Angus Crookshank's name. However, we know that he is out long term with a knee injury. Uh, we do have a happy belated birthday for him as well on Saturday. So we're hoping that Crooker can get healthy and get back on the ice soon. But Belleville Senators training camp will be underway today. And that's great news because the Belleville Sen season begins the day after the Sen season. So they're now 11 days away and they get started in Laval against the Rocket, the farm team of the Montreal Canadiens. All right, Pilsy. So we've got the lineup for tonight. What is your locked on player and what are you hoping to see against the Toronto Maple Leafs? Well, let me take another look at uh, that lineup we got there. And I think, you know, like we need some offense here tonight. Like we cannot get shut out again against a uh, Maple Leafs team. Now, I'm not sure what the Maple Leafs roster is this time. I'm sure it's going to be a lot more NHL ready. I'm going to say my locked on player for today is going to be Zach Sanford. This is someone, you know, it brought in for Logan Brown. Two guys that both their teams are disappointed in them. They are looking for fresh starts here. He's going to be matched up with his old buddy from BC, Colin White. 
And I think we need to see some offense from him, right? Like I think the the size, the frame fooled everyone into thinking he's going to be a grinder, physical player, but he's not that guy. And that's fine. But if you're not that guy, you need to show up in other areas. I want to see him get definitely above that 10 goal mark this season. Somewhere around his uh, career high of 16 would be great. If he can hit 15 goals, that'd be good. Try to spark Colin White. Like I think this might be... Like, just as much the narrative of this trade is getting rid of Logan Brown, obviously, that it was the relationship was over, he had to go. But it's also, man, we locked up Colin White real early. This contract is not paying off. We need to do something to boost this guy. Let's find a guy who is great chemistry with, who's available, who can play on a bottom six depth role, and Zach Sanford is that guy. Let's see him boost Colin White. Let's see what he can do. I'm stoked uh, to have this guy in the lineup. He's a Stanley Cup champion. Pierre Dorian likes winners. He's got some uh, experience. He's got some pedigree. He's still young. He's got lots of miles left on those legs. So Zach Sanford is my locked on player. Can I take the low hanging fruit or should I give a, uh, a secondary answer as well? If the low hanging fruit is there, you're a fool not to take it. So take it. Shane Pinto is going to be my locked on player. Guy's getting a chance to play in a comfortable situation where he scored seven points in 12 games, was a monster at both ends of the ice with Timmy Superstar and Connor Brown. Can he reignite that flame? We're about to find out because if he does, I don't think there's going to be any other combinations we have to worry about when it comes to who's centering that second line. And oh, it makes me a little nervous to have uh, the top two centers being 22 and 20 years old. But at the same time, like if they're going out and earning that spot, what are you going to do? Like yeah. you just have to ro roll with the punches. If your $5 million, almost $4.75 million center can't hang, then you can't play them there. Get these guys up and ready to go. I, I know that the, the Sens fan cynic in me will say, oh, well, this just means that they have more leverage in their negotiations, and then we'll have to deal with this all over again uh, next year with Newport Sports, with Josh Norris, and then the following year with Shane Pinto's representatives. But if you're DJ Smith, man, you got to get the best roster out there that's going to give you a chance to win, and I think Shane Pinto does that, so I'm locked on him tonight, hoping that he can reignite that magic. Yeah, uh, guys, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, Ross might need to get some sunscreen on his nose as the it's sun is directly, right directly only on his nose. He looks like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with uh, with a white nose here instead, though. But yeah, that's uh, that's definitely an interesting point. And I think, uh, man, this they I just I don't want to see that. There you go. That's a little better. I don't want to see them dumb. lose to the Leafs <laughs> again like this because that's just a terrible precursor to the home opener because. And also, not just the home opener, but I believe the Sens then go to Toronto right after. So it's it, we're up against Leafland here for quite a while. So let's see some positive momentum going into the regular season. Only three more exhibition games before the Ottawa Senators are back playing meaningful hockey. And we hope that you follow along with us the entire way. You can follow us on Twitter at Sens Central on Instagram, locked on dot senators and we do appreciate all the comments feedback and um support as well so we're looking forward man it's been a long long time since fans have been able to pack the ctc for a meaningful game so if you're heading to the to the home opener give us a show we'd love to meet up have a beer pre-game or during intermission and until then we've got lots coming this week and we'll get into all that including a recap of lot of tonight's game coming up tomorrow and well, we'll update how our Locked On players did. Before we go, Belleville, um, not only are they apologizing on Twitter for putting half guys on their roster that are actually still in the NHL <laughs> or injured, they're uh, replying to everyone, mentioning <laughs> mentioning just that, but they also just put out their lines, Pilsy, for Ooh. this morning. And there are some guys that you won't recognize just being on AHL tryouts or contracts or all that, uh, like their top line center, Chartier. Never heard of the guy. Not going to pretend like I have. However, he's centering Roby Jarventi and Igor Sokolov. And then on the second line, this Andrew Daus. Not Philip Dau, but Andrew Daus with an apostrophe. Yeah. So no relation there. Uh, he'll be beside Kaslik and Reinhardt. And then the third line. See, I I'm confused here unless it's a different guy. Like, isn't Parker Kelly still with the NHL team? Yeah. 
because <laughs> they have Kelly on the third line here. So, anyways, a bit of a mess down in Belleville uh, right now. Preseason but, for them too. Yeah, yeah, preseason for them too. But we'll try to figure that out sooner than later. They did say that JBD and Lassie Thompson were extras today and did not skate. So uh, I don't know exactly what that means. We'll try to figure it out for tomorrow. But uh, yeah, so we got some digging to do when it comes to Belleville because I don't know how helpful the account's being right now. But that's all right. That's all right. We'll figure it out. And you do have Sense Hockey tonight, so that's great in itself. But for today, we say goodbye. Thanks so much for listening or watching on YouTube for Brandon Pillar. I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senator Podcast.